welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori Brain. Thank you so much for being here. So today this is a little tiny book report. Um, so this is not a book review. This is just a book that I read recently that I thought was so absolutely amazing with some really great things that I had never heard before talking about anxiety that I wanted to share with you guys because I'm not going to be like, hey, go spend nine hours of your life listening to this or you know, the next two weeks reading this book. I just wanted to share with you the aspects of it that I found so helpful that, again, I hadn't heard before. It's like you sit down and you read an anxiety book and they're like, hey, are you exercising? Are you eating right? Do you have some kind of spiritual practice? Are you meditating? The end. No, this is not that. These are new things that I had not heard before that I wanted to share with you. So here we go. Oh, shoot. I literally got this book from the library just so that I could hold it up. I listened to it on my, I think it was on my library app, but they also have it on Audible. It is so freaking good, but I got it out of the library just so I could hold it up like this so you guys could see it. So it's called Chatter, the voice in our head, why it matters and how to harness it by Ethan Cross. And like I, it, I'm just going to get into it because it's, it's so good. So for each coping skill, for each tool that he gives you, he goes into the science behind why it works, different things that they've found with it, different ways that you can use it. And then at the end of the chapter, he has a list of tools that are really helpful. So these are, this is his list, and I'm going to explain all of them poorly, but hopefully in a way that you can understand. And if you want to just go ahead and read it, it is that good. It is not a waste of time. I have suffered from anxiety for so long, like so long. I don't even know when it started, but it was definitely when I was a kid. I have this memory of myself. I was like seven years old and I had this really big rock, this really big piece of granite. And I laid down and I just laid it on my chest because that was what it felt like, all that anxiety. And I was like, wow, I can actually feel what it feels like inside only on the outside. And it was this like multiple pound giant piece of granite that I was just laying on my seven year old chest. Anxiety in my life has been something that I have learned to embrace over the years. Now I think it's hilarious and it actually makes me really good at the jobs that I hold, including YouTube. It's a way that I can connect to people. Like I, I think it's a gift more than a curse these days. However, it still gets the better of me sometimes. It's still something that I have to work with. And the tips in this book have just been like, I haven't heard them before. It's huge. So first is this idea of distancing. Now, this is something that, you know, really big in the 90s, early 2000s was like, you got to process, you got to get it out. You know, you got to have like this idea of catharsis. However, they have found more and more over the years that some manner of distancing, not repressing, not just putting it in a box in your mind and never thinking about it again, but some form of distancing is actually helpful because it allows adversity to stay adversity and not turn into trauma. So one quick way that you can distance is by saying you, so the second person, and using your name with it instead of I when you're thinking about an issue. So let me just give you an example. If you say I got an unexpected bill, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I'm nervous about how I'm going to pay for this and X, Y, and Z. If you change that to you, Tori, got an unexpected bill. You, Tori, are not sure how you're going to pay for it. You, Tori, and your brain automatically, instead of like being deer in the headlights of I, your brain starts thinking of solutions. Your brain is like, oh, well, I can help you. I am extremely helpful. Let's figure this thing out. So that was one of the things that I thought was really good. Another form of distancing is advising yourself like you would advise a friend. So, you know, you're just going back to the bill. You're really worried about this bill. You know it's a big deal. Put that scenario in somebody that you know. So, you know, a, a sister, a friend, a neighbor, something like that. Your brain will also switch back out of the trauma response, like fight, fright, freeze, I say it wrong, fight, flight, freeze, and it will shift it into the helper mode. Just that little bit of distancing of being like, oh, how can I help this person? What can they do to help themselves? How can I come up with solutions for this issue? Another thing is to broaden your perspective. 
So this is something that's really good because you've, you know, you're, you're going through this issue. Say you just went through a terrible breakup and you just feel like the world is never going to be the same and you're absolutely devastated. Think about the last time you felt this feeling. Maybe it was something that you went through when you were 18 and you're like, wow, this feels the exact same in my body as it did then. And then also think about how you overcame that and also think about into the future. Like there's a possibility that I might feel this type of pain again. And I got through it the first time and I know I'm going to get through it now. And it's a possibility that I'll feel this again in the future because this is a common human feeling that a lot of people feel. Also reframing your problem as a challenge. I thought this one was awesome because instead of being like, oh, I can't believe this. It's so unfair. This is devastating. All this stuff being like, how am I going to get through this challenge where it's more like a game than something terrible that happened to you? I love this one. Reinterpret your body's chatter. So it's very common for us, you know, to get some kind of bad news or to get nervous about a meeting or a speech or something and our stomach starts hurting, we get a slight headache, our brain is like going nuts and this can create a vicious cycle of not feeling our best, not thinking our best way, and then, you know, just everything kind of devolves into a panic attack eventually. So instead, you're like, wow, my heart is really pounding right now. Wow, my stomach kind of hurts. My mouth is dry and my palms are sweaty. My body is preparing for this challenge right now. Or my body is preparing for some kind of adversity. Something like that is really helpful because it keeps your brain grounded instead of like all these physical symptoms kind of mashing up with all of your mental symptom symptoms and then just like devolving into this absolute tornado you can actually stay grounded and hear what your body is telling you without falling into that just cycle of anxiety another one normalize the experience so for instance my divorce probably one of the most painful things I've ever been through in my entire life. Do you guys know how many people get divorced? So many, so many people get divorced, like very, very, very high percentage. Different countries, it's different percentages, but it is one of the most normal things you can do. Unfortunately, it's not fun, but that is something that so many people have gone through to varying degrees of suffering. So normalizing your experience, thinking about how many people you know who have gone through the same thing or how likely it is for a person to go through that thing. Even with my lupus diagnosis, you know, one in a hundred people get diagnosed with lupus. That's a lot of people, okay? Like that's, that's a lot of people on the earth who have experienced what I'm experiencing right now. Another one, I love this, mental time travel. That is where you go to a place in your brain where you don't care about this situation anymore. And you think about a time in the past where you thought you were never gonna not care about it and now you don't care about it because it's been a few years, it's been a few decades and you just don't care that much anymore. This one is huge and extremely helpful. Okay, I love this one, I love this one. Change the view. This is literally like changing the camera angle in your mind, taking a fly on the wall perspective where instead of seeing everything through your eyes or like from up above you, in like that first person shooter type thing, you are actually picturing it from the side. You're viewing yourself like a profile or you're viewing yourself like from the omniscient perspective, just like this little person walking around going through this thing. Super helpful. I hadn't heard that before. Like that's, a, that's such a cool trick. That's awesome. This one's great. I actually use this a lot before I read this book. I had heard this one before, but I'm going to add it in here anyway, because I think it's awesome. Um, writing expressively. And this is where you just get everything out. You like, you just don't worry about punctuation. Don't worry about swearing. Don't worry about, Oh, what if somebody else finds this? You can burn it when you're done. It doesn't matter, but just get everything out there. Just write. You can even switch halfway through the sentence and start talking about something completely different if that is what your mind is doing. That is also very helpful because you can only think at the speed of your writing. And so as you're writing, your thoughts will naturally slow down and restabilize. Like you'll come back to normal. It's just, it's very helpful. I like this one too. Think about something from a neutral third party's perspective. So this is kind of like the judge, like, you know, how would the judge feel? 
if I was telling my version of the story and I know this person's perspective or, you know, maybe it's like a man versus nature situation where it's like this illness that you got or like this car wreck that you got into or like something like that, something traumatizing and you are viewing it from the perspective of the narrator like just the perspective of somebody telling the story from beginning to end that you were involved with. That no that neutral third party can also help your brain calm down. Okay, this one was great. This one I have felt before. I have a lot of stuffed animals. Anyway, so it has actually been proven that holding something, whether it is some kind of talisman, a worry stone, even like, you know, your your rosary or like a cross around your neck or something. I don't have a cross, but it's, you know necklace or even a stuffed animal can help you feel better it reduces your stress hormones in your body I have so many stuffed animals like after my house fire a couple years ago I had a lot of stuffed animals like that were my childhood stuffed animals from the 90s and I'm so lucky that they were TY toys because everybody like saved their TYs in really good condition thinking that they were going to be millionaires but now they're not so I can buy them really cheap on eBay so I replaced all of them and that is something that I've done over and over again where it's like if you just have a stuffed animal if you just have something to hold on to whatever that is it can reduce your anxiety the last one rituals this is so great and I think just like we don't realize how helpful it is and how much of us just do it subconsciously. You know, one of them praying in your head when you're going through something. Another one is tapping. If you can just like tap, it doesn't even matter if you're like doing it the right way or like the emotional freedom tapping is what it's called like it doesn't matter you know it's like just a ritual that you do that you can help calm yourself through it anyway there are so many more tools in this book and it has been so helpful for me it was really fun to read like he's a very very good writer so um if you guys want to read it or have read it and you think it's awesome let me know um also any other anxiety books i listen to books constantly like when i'm you know doing housework or driving or even while i'm at work sometimes doing something where it doesn't involve like a whole lot of like face interaction with somebody you know if i'm working on a report or something like that i'm able to listen to books at the same time and they have just been so helpful for me and this is one of my favorite ones that i read in 2023 so anyway any book recommendations drop them below and i will talk to you guys next time See ya.